Hi, I'm Stephanie Razzo. Welcome to Nature Sketch Crate's Monarch Butterfly Go Out and Sketch instructional video. In this video, I'll be showing you how to sketch a monarch butterfly. First, make sure you have all the materials you need before you go out to sketch. You can head out to a garden, park, or your backyard. Today, I'm sketching from a video of a monarch I fostered and released. Remember, this is just a sketch. Take your time to observe nature, relax, and paint. While sketching, apply what you know about butterflies from the step-by-step -step sketching lesson. First, use a pencil to lightly draw a rough sketch of the animal to get the basic shape. So determine where you want it to sit on your page and how big you want it to be. Kind of get an idea. You don't even have to put on any marks, just kind of Move your pencil around to get an idea of that shape. And then you can just use very, very, very light marks to put in the basic shape of the animal. And these can all be redefined later. getting the basic size and layout of the animal. And then find a defining point for you, something as a landmark, and start from there. I like this dot right here, it's kind of in the middle. I'm gonna work out from that. And this particular cell is great too. And it comes down about halfway. Maybe not quite as angled as that. I'm gonna go ahead and don't be afraid to erase, just don't do it too much. Light line going in. And even though this animal is stationary, it's still moved. Let it settle down. And then continue to draw that shape in. And it's approximate, it's not gonna be exact, it's just getting an idea of this animal. And then I'll start working from there, drawing in the other shapes and thinking of them as shapes, not as an entire butterfly, which is much more intimidating. And thinking about the size based on the relation of everything around it. I'm probably a little bit too big or a little too small in some spots, but it's okay. It's just a sketch. Just getting an idea of this animal. And I find for these demonstrations, it's best to do this from a somewhat stationary animal rather than a moving animal, because this is a sketching demonstration for beginners. It'd be hard to really show the technique if you haven't been drawing very long. You don't have a lot of experience. And even the stationary animal just keeps moving a bit and things will change so you can redefine them or just kind of leave them. So you can see these are female monarch butterflies because they don't have the spots on the hind wings. And I'm just gonna keep adding the cells working from the one, the central one. And it's real sketchy. There's a lot of different lines here. Usually the darker line helps me know that that's the line I'm going to be 
basing the size of that shape on. So that's my final line. Start with a little bit of the lighter lines first. And I'll keep going through, just adding these in, redefining them a little bit, but not being too carried away. See, these spots are much bigger when I look at it again. So I'll make them bigger. Maybe the monarch moved a little bit. It has been moving just slightly. The other monarch is very active. These two monarchs stuck around for a long time. I fostered them. To show my kids and also to help with these videos. And most of them flew off right as we released them. They just flew off into the big pine trees near my house. And these two hung around. Usually we release them on a morning that was really sunny. But these two were released on a morning that was really foggy. And a little overcast, and which is rare for the LA area where I live. It wasn't going to rain, it's just a little cooler than normal. Something like that might be an observation I'd want to add in, whether it be writing or pictures. But I'm just going to add the scientific name at the end and the common name, just like I do with the step-by-steps, just for simplicity and consistency. But for your sketch, go ahead and add whatever observations, the weather, or whatever might have been around. So I have that shape defined, and the forewing looks like it starts with this cell here, and maybe the butterfly moved. Things are just a little bit different. But this actually is way farther down here. And the forewing kind of starts he right under here right now. So I'm gonna redefine that a bit just outside to give myself something to base this on. It's over here quite a bit. It comes down, I think about like that. Then I'll just kind of base it on where these cells are, even though they're not exactly the same. It's just a sketch, so it's okay. So there's this cell, and under that there's a big circle, and another circle. That one. That kind of comes up over here. And then 
a few cells here. Kind of coming into this. And then a couple out here. Big white cell. Redefining that. Kind of comes up like that. I'm not getting exact, just really rough, really approximate. Just going really quickly through this. thinking of these as little shapes, each individual shapes, and I'm thinking about where they are in relation to the other shapes around them and what size they are in relation to those shapes. So that I can figure out basically where they go. And I'm not getting exact about it, I'm just getting them in there because this is just a sketch. Maybe I have too many in one spot, or the a little bit too small, or a little bit too big. I'm not going to be too concerned about that. But you can add it in your observations if that's something that you'd like to do. You can make any kind of observation you like um, outside of this image, or on the image, or whatever. It's your sketch, so you do what you like with it. And some of these dots kind of change based on what's going on with the butterfly. So even though it's fairly stationary, it still moves a bit. So now I'll start adding the head details. I'm not going to worry too much about any of uh, Anything that I got wrong, the sizing or positioning, because the animal is moving and it's a sketch I'm going fairly quick. You can redefine the spaces if you find you need to do that. Maybe you need a little bit too small. I'll just make a darker line to redefine that outside. And then you keep going. A leg here. Kind of goes out about there. And it might be good to get the flower in, but today I'm just going to do the butterfly. So 
So this is a shape, curls up towards, you know, kind of lines up with the head here. And right here, you can see the proboscis coming out, going kind of around that, and then disappearing. It's a little bit more curved. Like I said, I'm not gonna worry too much about exact right now. And then it goes kind of up and out. It kind of lines up with that other leg. Again, approximate, not exact. That might be too thick. I'm gonna leave it. because this is just a sketch. Getting just an idea of this animal. That might be a little bit too small here. So kind of throws everything off for me, so I'm just going to redraw it. I'm not really liking that. It's okay to erase a little bit as long as you don't get carried away. And then redefine some areas. This here, up there. shine from, I'm not sure if that's a spot or if it's a shine from the leg that kind of comes off here and then goes onto the flower. It might be a bit long, that's okay. Just a sketch. And define that there. I just have a few more spots to put in before start the inking. And a few more lines here. I probably have too many spots. And it's not exactly right. And you can count the spots if you want. But since this is a sketch, I'm just kind of Wing in a bit and adding them in. And I'm going to define this a little bit more. Make sure that this area is ready and defined. So, this step drawing these wings and the body and the animal in with your pencil is kind of like the same as when you were transferring with the tracing transfer paper and the reference image. So all everything you have in here is what you would have when you started the step-by-step, -step, but you did it freehand. And so we'll put Monarch. Butterfly. And then italic. We'll put the scientific name. That way I can write it in ink. The next step you'll add some paint. So I have all my paints already mixed left over from my step-by-step -step painting and I'm just going to add some water to revive those. Just like with my step-by-step -step, I'm going to start with a very light color with a lot of water added to it in my palette. Just go ahead and start adding that to the cells and not being exact at all. 
don't really know when that animal's gonna fly off. Well, I guess I do, because this is a pre-recorded. But just kind of getting it in. Get real messy. And if you get into a white one, it's not a big deal. And then while that is drying, you can add your first layer of black just for expediency. Make sure you don't put your hand into what you've already painted. So you do want to work a little faster when you're in the field. So you can work on the areas that are dry. Again, I'm just like with the step-by-step, -step, I'm going to take the paint and kind of outline the dots to keep those areas white and then fill in in between. I'm just going to take this black and go throughout the whole butterfly to get that initial layer in. And I'm starting top to bottom so that I don't get any smudges. And be careful, this is already dry, so I can start adding the color on there as well if I want. So once I get this body done, I'll probably add a little bit of color in there. And if you accidentally paint in one of these spots, it's just a sketch. They're probably not the right size anyway, unless you spent a lot of time. But I encourage you just to kind of do this quickly and relax. I'm going to clean my brush off onto my towel. And I'm gonna grab a little bit of that darker orange color now that the first layer on those orange colored cells are done. And since this is the uh, under part of the wing, we painted the top and the step-by-step. -step. It's gonna be a little less vibrant. And you can see that whenever that other butterfly in the video opens up its wings. So I'm gonna get color that's pretty light and not too, it's gonna have a lot of water added to it, so not too dark. And since these are pre-mixed, it's gonna make it faster and easier to get this done. Mixing them in the field makes everything take longer. Now the butterfly's wings have moved and I can see a little bit of the cells underneath on the upper part of that fore wing. It's constantly, even with the stationary animal, it's constantly changing. It's another reason why you can't get too caught up when you're sketching an animal, a live animal. You can't get too caught up with the details. Because they're always changing. As you can see, like, that wing is starting to open a bit more and there's a little bit more of that orange coming out. So I'm just gonna put a sliver to indicate that and stay with my original drawing. Now that I've added that in, by the time we get some black, it should start drying. My butterfly is completely moving. And that's okay since I have the entire butterfly already drawn in. Now I have the color as well. And there are a lot of colors. So I can just finish this without even having a butterfly in front of me. So I know that this wing is black. In between the cells, it's going to be black. I'm not exactly sure where any, so it's a little wet there still. I'm not exactly sure where shading on the cells themselves might be, but it's just a quick sketch, so that's okay, you don't have to add that. 
That looks like it's actually moved back to its spot that it was in before, more or less. So that might be helpful. For getting the shading on those orange cells. But I do have to wait for them to dry. So with sketching, you're just at the whim of whatever the animal's deciding to do. Let's continue to fill this in. Doesn't need to be exact. Just getting it in there. And while the animal is there, I'm going to dab my brush off onto my towel just a bit. Test it on my test strip and it looks like a nice light gray amount. And I'm gonna add just to add some shadow, take a shadow and shade this just to give it that extra element. And I'll be able to put in a little bit more of the black in just a second here now. So now that I have that basic idea, I didn't put a very dark shadow and I wasn't very exact with it, just the basic idea of the shadow. Thank you for filling this in. Just hope that the animal doesn't move again. But like I said, if it does, we have the reference. We know what a monarch looks like. We've already drawn the monarch. And we know the colors. And now we have the shadow. So we're set. And so I'll be able to do a few layers of this black to get it to that darker that color before adding ink. And the sketch is pretty messy, which is totally fine. It's just a fun study of this animal. Redefine it if you want to, or redefine it later with your pen. It's all good. If I filled in anything I wasn't supposed to, it's okay. So the top part is pretty dry. You can kind of dab it. You should definitely have your watercolor on hand. And I'll just add, starting again with the antenna. And you can do this with your pen if that's too small. I'm barely putting this down onto the paper. I'm not going, I'm going to do just a little bit on the proboscis. It's a little bit bigger there. And it's moved a lot, but I know that the lower part of the legs, some parts here where the light's not hitting, the light's kind of coming down there. It's going to be a little bit lighter. So kind of try to keep a little bit of the contrast there the light and the dark areas. And then let's go ahead and fill in the body. Being careful not to touch anything that's wet. This is all pretty dry now. As long as you don't get too wet when you add the paper, watercolor to the paper, it will dry fairly fast. And so this technique is lending to sketching because you don't have too wet. Oh, this kind of detailed sketching. You could do a gesture sketch, which is just a quick line sketch, just giving the idea of the very, very loose idea of the animal, much, much looser than this without any details. And then you could add some very loose paint as well. This technique matches what we're doing or what we're trying to accomplish. Getting a slightly detailed idea of this animal onto the paper. And I'm just going to go through 
this fresh black it's very black which is great because that means I'm just going to do one coat and but there's step by step it take more time doing all of this because I have more time this animal is going to move it's not going to stay there so we just want to get it on there we're not worried too much about accuracy as much as we were with the step by step or mistakes If we don't get the sizing quite right, it's totally fine. Because this one's a bit messier. That's what happens. When sketching from a live animal in a quick manner. You could do this with taking a lot more time and watching the animal for a lot longer. And then maybe you'll get a very much more exact sketch, but animals are unpredictable, so you don't want to take too long. It's kind of filling in I'm not even looking at my video at this point, I'm just kind of filling in these spaces. I'm adding a little bit of water to that pot because it is very concentrated. Dab it on my towel, of course, and before applying it to my painting, I'm pulling it throughout. Not worrying too much about edges or lines from my watercolor because this is just a sketch. And whatever edges or lines the watercolor creates, it's just going to create a nice, unique look to the painting. finish up with this black and when I'm done I'll add the ink. So I'm going to add a little bit more of the orange. Oops, it's a bit too bright. So I'm gonna take a clean, damp brush and just kind of wet that down to lighten it up. I'm not worried about paint getting out of the edges. I'll just continue to add a little bit more bright color. Now that I added the black and the contrast, it's just a little light. And add a little bit more of that bright orange in. So it's not quite so white. It's really rough and sketchy the way I'm putting the paint in, just like it was when I was drawing it. Let me check to see if it's dry. It's drying up on the top so I can start drawing it in. And I usually start with the 005. those lines redrawn. You can jump right to the 01 if you like, since most of this is black anyway. And the animal, in this case, the animal's in a different position.
I'm just defining the edges a bit. Since this butterfly has moved so much, I'm really just kind of winging it by putting in the lines where I think it possibly might be, which often happens with sketching animals in this way. The more you get to know the animal, the more you'll be able to Add the details in, and the animal is gone. I'm not able to see it anymore. After I do this, even if the animal is gone, I don't have to. because I have my reference images and my about me and I've already drawn in most of this anyway. And it's a sketch, so it doesn't have to be exactly like what it was. I'm just defining this so that when I go in with my thicker markers, my thicker micron pens, they don't make any large mistakes. If I make any mistakes with this 005, this tiny little mark, they can easily be redefined later. This one, as you see, I'm making new marks. I did that with an 08, would be having to fill that area in a lot more, which we're going to do anyway, but. All right, so most of that's in. And I'm gonna take the a one micron, start making some darker lines. And again, not looking at the video, just kind of basing it on what I've already done. And adding in those lines. Finding a few. Most of this I'm going to do with the 08. Start writing in the common name again. Maybe you made some observations and like to take some time to write those in. I'm not paying attention to my reference animal anymore in my video. So I can take my time with the rest. I'm just using what I know about butterflies from my step-by-step -step lesson now. And what I've already, basing it on what I've already drawn. So just like the step-by-step, -step, I'm gonna start drawing in some lines to fill in these spaces. Start defining these outside edges a little bit more. 
just because I think that works well in this case. Leave a little bit lighter on the side there. satisfying part of this. I don't want to work too much before getting this upper part so I don't smudge the ink with my hand. You may want to put something underneath your hand to prevent smudges. And hairs go from top to bottom even though I can't see it. I know that from step by step. Just so I don't forget, I'm gonna do it right now. I'm kind of jumping around a lot today. Butterflies have cells here and they have little scales all over their wings. Kind of working my way back over here. It's part of the wing. in whatever way you want, especially when you're doing the ink, whatever you feel comfortable with. So it's a nice black in area on the wing and the body there. So that is one last wing to define a bit. This upper wing here that's in the back. I'm just going to define it a little bit, a little straighter, maybe round up some edges and blacken it up a bit. Letting some of that watercolor paint shine through or show through. Feels like it shines to me. Defining the edges leaving all these pencil marks. I made the mistake, it's all fine. As you can see, mine is not nearly perfect. It's just 
It's a rough, sketchy drawing and painting. We'll outline all of these white cells here and then fill it in in between. Just real rough. Some lines. And then I want to highlight the name, the common name of this butterfly. So I'm going to thicken that up with the 08 micron. After adding the ink, you can go back and add some more paint if you like to. Don't forget to add some observations or your thoughts. Remember, this is your sketchbook. You can. Make it your own. Great job observing your world and keep practicing.